at Optavia, our mission is to offer the world lifelong transformation one healthy habit at a time. The following audio contains the personal testimonials of independent coaches and clients within the Optavia community. Their results are based on the unique experiences of their journey. We cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. We hope these stories inspire you to continue your journey with or join Optavia, but please note they have not been verified and your individual journey to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you speak with a healthcare provider in the U.S. or a doctor in Singapore and Hong Kong prior to beginning your journey with Optavia. Additionally, this audio may contain income or earning representations of some independent Optavia coaches. We cannot guarantee financial success. Success with Optavia is derived from successful sales efforts, which required hard work, diligence, skill, persistence, competence, and leadership. Optavia acknowledges that this audio may be accessible to Optavia coaches in the U.S., Hong Kong, and Singapore. For independent Optavia coaches operating in the U.S., please see the Optavia Income Disclosure Statement for statistics on actual earnings of U.S. coaches under the U.S. Compensation Plan. Please note that the Income Disclosure Statement only applies to independent Optavia coaches operating in the U.S. under the U.S. Compensation Plan and does not in any way constitute any representations as to actual or potential accrual of benefits for Hong Kong or Singapore coaches under the International Compensation Plan. Yours in Health, the Optavia team. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone to the Habits of Health community time. I'm Amber Smithson, certified Optavia coach, and so excited to be talking to you tonight about Element 23 in your life book. Master your thoughts and your emotions. Here's a picture of me. I am really excited to be sharing some thoughts from the life book with you. I'm excited to be sharing some stories. And I have a gal coming on who is in our Optavia community who's going to be sharing as well, Katie Knight. And we are going to have so much fun together. So let's kick it off with our first poll. If you are live, you get to vote. If you're watching a playback, then you're just going to want to be live next time because we have so much fun live. Okay, so which answer best describes you? Are you a U.S. independent Optavia coach? Are you a U.S. Optavia client? We also have Hong Kong, Singapore Optavia coaches. We have Hong Kong, Singapore clients, or maybe you're just a guest. Maybe you're checking us out, somebody threw you a link, and you are excited just to be here. So make sure that you vote on that poll so we can just see who, who is participating with us tonight. And just a reminder, if you don't have the Habits of Health Transformational System in your hands, <laughs> you are going to want to get that. Um, we have been going over the whole all the elements in the life book during 2020. We're on element 23. Um, we're gonna be wrapping up the year with a few more elements and we're gonna start fresh in 2021. Isn't that crazy, you guys? Can't you wait for 2021? It's gonna be so fun. <laughs> so if you don't have these books in your hands, you're going to want to do that. All right, let's dive right in. Element 23 agenda, you guys. I don't know if you have read or worked through element 23 yet, but this is my favorite one. Okay. And I say that about a few of them, but this is for real. I love element 21. So we're going to go over mindset. Hopefully you're going to increase awareness of how emotional management can help create optimal health and well-being. Sometimes we don't even realize what we're missing in our optimal health puzzle. <laughs> Sometimes we go, I didn't even know I was missing that. We don't know what we don't know. So we want to increase that awareness of how that emotional management can help you create optimal health and well-being. Then we're going to work on a skill set, learn strategies to maintain internal stability despite what the world throws at you. Okay, have you ever said something like this? Boy, when it just gets less crazy around here or when things just settle down, or when my life isn't so busy, then dot, 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 okay? <laughs> Put me in the chat if you've ever heard, if you've ever said one of those things that I just said. Like, I will do that when things get less busy, when I'm less stressed out, when fill in the blank. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of me's in the chat. 
We are going to learn strategies tonight on this call to maintain internal stability despite what the world throws at you. Does that excite anybody? And action, practice the steps to processing emotions. Okay, I'm excited for tonight, you guys. All right, here's a quote from Dr. A that I really like because it makes you think. Think about whether you spend as much time in the mental gym as you do in the physical gym. <laughs> I hope you guys wore your mental gym workout clothes. I don't know what that looks like for you. Maybe it looks like pajamas. I don't know, yoga pants. But we are going to do some mental gymnastics tonight. And I'm excited for that because I think that we really do need to spend as much time in the mental gym as we do in the physical gym because it's so important. Okay, let's just do a little review. Let's do a little review. This is from element four, which by the way, is my second favorite element. <laughs> element four, we talked a little bit about above and below the line. And above the line is where you're open and curious. You have a growth mindset. And below the line is you're closed, you're defensive, you want to be right. And we really find that when we get into that above the line thinking, that growth mindset, that it's really helpful in actually changing your, changing your mindset, changing your stars, changing your neural pathways, really starting to have new habits become the norm. And so I want to um, do a, another poll in just a second. But before I bring that poll up, above the line, here's some statements that we hear ourselves saying above the line. We say things like, what can I learn from this? We say things like, huh, how does this apply to me? Or we say things like, I really appreciate that when we learn new things, okay? So these are all above the line mindsets. Below the line are things like, I'm right and they're wrong. We hear that a lot right now, right? Especially in, uh, in politics. <laughs> How about this? I'm trying really hard or it's not my fault. Or what about, it's no use, I give up. Okay, so I wanna put a poll up. Right now, do you feel like you are above or below the line? Just right now, just how you're feeling, how you're feeling about what we're talking about, like your mindset about health, maybe just right now tonight. Because we might be closed and defensive and be like, oh, I'm just so sick of, I'm so sick of salad. <laughs> or we might be in this above the line, like, I wonder what I can learn tonight that's going to help me to really be able to move past some of my blocks. Or we might be thinking, oh, it's just, it's just all the same. Like I try and then I fail and I try again. That would be below the line. Above the line would be like, you know what? Maybe I have been missing something. I'm ready to figure out what it is. All right. So let's put, let's put those results up. I'm just curious. I'm open and curious. Okay, good. We have a lot who are live. 88% are like, I am above the line right now. I'm open, I'm curious, and I'm ready to grow. And then 12%, good for you. We're just owning it because it's not bad to be, the, be below the line. It's a place where you can learn something where you go, huh, okay, what can I learn from myself right now that I'm being, a, I'm a little defensive or I'm closed or I'm in this loop. So good for you, 12% who, uh, who admitted to being below the line right now. I love it. Yeah, and both every day. I love how Amy Miller put that in the chat. Is It depends on the second, right? Sometimes we, we slip below the line very easily. Okay, so that was our poll. I launched it a little early. All right, so let's do a little review now of the three brains. So this is also from element four. And before we dive into like our meat, the meat of what we're gonna talk about with processing emotions tonight. 
So Dr. A in element four, and also again in element 23 that we're going over tonight, he talks about the three brains. And the lowest brain is our lizard brain. This is our, you know, just reactions. This is like our heart beats on itself. We don't tell it to beat. This is like, we hear a loud noise and we like, we like tense up and we look and we're scared. You know, that it's like a lizard. Have you guys ever seen a lizard? Okay, when I take my kids to Hawaii, it's like their favorite thing is to look for geckos. Okay, and geckos are they're kind of like lizards, right? <laughs> I think so. And whenever you get too close to a gecko, then it just like scurries off. It's like it disappears in less than a second. And it, it's just like automatic. Like no one had to teach that lizard, like humans are scary because they're big and loud right? No one taught the lizard that. <laughs> no one taught the gecko. It just like, you know, goes. So that's our lizard brain is stimulus and response are just like really fast. This is the first part of our brain in the base of our brainstem that, that developed first. So then we have our Labrador brain. This is like our emotions. So think of a Labrador. Um, I had a dog um, growing up named Sandy and because I love Annie and she named her dog Sandy. So I named my dog Sandy. And Sandy was this really big part German shepherd, part Samoyed. It was this giant beast of a dog, but so happy and so like furry and always wanted to please everybody. And Sandy would like find gophers and then like catch them and leave them on our back deck. And she was so excited and so like, just like love me and be so proud of me that I killed this gopher and brought it to you. <laughs> and so that's what our um, emotional brain, it doesn't feel bad. It, you know, that dog didn't feel bad that it killed that gopher and brought it to me. It really just wanted love. It wanted some attention. And so this is what our, um, this is what our Labrador brain really does is, it's that love of food and family and wants to be stroked and, you know, just like connects to that emotional, like, oh, this is the part of our brain that probably is like, this is the last chance to have candy corn because Halloween's over or, <laughs> you know, want to eat that pie because it's Thanksgiving and it's family, you know, this part of our brain can kind of like be very emotional. And then there's our human thinking brain. This is our prefrontal cortex. Now this is where our discipline comes in and our willpower and our really making long-term decisions. This is where we decide what our higher wants are. Our higher wants, like we want optimal health and we want to be able to run and not you know, be out of breath. And we want to be able to accomplish things in our businesses and in our lives and with our families and goals and so that's our human brain now when stimulus comes and it goes out at the labrador brain usually we're going to be making decisions that don't really support our higher wants and desires right but if we let that response go all the way up to the human brain to our prefrontal cortex now that is when we are going to be really making the best decisions. Okay, Janet says, I can fall into Labrador brain so easily. We all can, Janet. <laughs> this is what we're going to be talking about tonight is how we can really start having our responses go all the way up to the human brain. Are you guys excited? Are you guys excited to like have a tool, like a real tangible tool? Put me in the chat. If you are ready for a real tangible tool that you can use that is going to help you tap into your human thinking brain consistently, that's what we're going to be talking about. But before we get to our first story that I'm really excited about, I want you to be thinking about what do I do when I'm emotional? Okay, we all have our go-tos. When, we, when we're emotional, when we're below the line, um, we do things, we have many ways to distract ourselves from being with and expressing our authentic feelings and emotions. 
and thought, okay? And there, you know, it's also ways that we simply just leave the now moment. Like maybe it's too overwhelming or it's too much or it's too loud or it's too whatever, okay? So I want you to look at this list and this isn't a comprehensive list, but this is a pretty good list, okay? So some people um, eat, especially like, sugary, fatty, salty. <laughs> okay, Grace said when I'm emotional, I want to eat. Yeah, okay, there's a lot of us on here, but that's the truth, right, for us. And that's our, that's our go-to buffer, that when we don't want to feel the emotions coming, we tend to go towards these, okay? So some people sleep, some people um, maybe drink or, you know, drugs, smoking, whatever. Um, some people get, like, really controlling, or you exercise, cleaning, gossiping, shopping, watch TV, Netflix, and chill, right? Swiping on your phone. Okay, have you ever found yourself like swiping on your phone and you're like on social media or whatever and all of a sudden like a whole hour went by? <laughs> you guys, okay, am I, I'm the only one. No, I see people in the chat saying yes. This is when we're buffering, okay? We're drifting below the line. And we are just wanting to just numb out. Okay, ask yourself, what do I do to numb out? And some buffering is like more destructive to our lives than others. And I admit to that, like sometimes, like if your emotional eating has taken to, you to a place where your health is very much out of whack and you know, you're on all kinds of medications or extremely overweight and it's really affecting your life, that could be something that, okay, this is really affecting me versus, oh, well, I exercise when I'm buffering and maybe that's kind of healthy anyway, or I clean or, but I want you instead, instead of thinking that buffering is bad, I want you to think, I want to become aware of it because you can do anything on the buffering list from above the line or below the line. I want to say that again. When you go below the line, you're buffering and you're just avoiding feelings, you're avoiding your emotions, you're avoiding situations. You can do anything on the list from above the line or below the line. Think about it. Can you eat, no matter what it is, can you eat from above the line where you're open and curious and, oh, I wonder what ingredients are in here and I wonder what that is and, or below the line like, I just can't deal with life, I need to stuff my face, <laughs> right? Anything on the list you can do from above the line or below the line, okay? So now I know a lot of you have kind of identified some of the things you do. Um, what I wanna do now is I want to um, give you an example. I want to bring on my friend Katie and she's going to tell you a story of how um, she really has utilized the skill that I'm going to teach you in just a few minutes and I want to get you really excited because Katie is amazing and I think her story is going to be extremely um, inspiring to you. So Katie, go ahead and come off mute, put your, um, your video on and um, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, take it away, Katie. We're excited to hear from you. Oh, thank you. I am excited to be here, I guess. <laughs> this is a great opportunity for growth, and that's what I'm looking at it as. Um, I've been a part of Optivia for six years now, um, and I've done the nursing mom program twice um, with my babies, and I just, I knew that when I had my last child, I, I knew the plan. I knew I was going to do nursing moms, and I was going to be this great example of a health coach losing baby weight and look at my progress. Um, I had a plan and 2020 hit me hard. Uh, I went in in April for my 20 week ultrasound to find out the gender of our baby. And instead I was told there was no heartbeat and that I would be delivering my stillborn son. Um, so I went from thriving and crushing life and just being so vibrant to just this darkness right um the the struggle of being told that i had to labor and deliver a dead baby was something i wanted to never endure 
I told my husband, I can't. I just begged the Lord to make it stop. Like, why would I go through this? And um, I had to go home and tell my kids that their baby, their brother had died. I had to bury my son. His name is Easton. And it is incredibly difficult anyways, but I've just struggled with depression and mental health for so long. So when I had that, I thought I would never recover. Um, you just get that raw spot where you're like, this is it. I will live in a dark hole forever. Um, at my worst, I wouldn't say I was suicidal, but I didn't want to exist. I didn't want people to depend on me. I didn't want to disappoint my kids, my husband, my family. I just didn't want to be needed because I couldn't, I couldn't carry that weight. Um, I've done counseling. My husband is a mental health professional and we're very aware of my struggle. And the trauma that I went through, it's just like, oh, I couldn't even watch commercials with babies, you know, like there's just triggers everywhere. And I got to a spot through this quarantine. That was in April, right? That's when the country shut down. Like we were told we couldn't touch, we couldn't hug, I couldn't have visitors. And I've never felt so isolated in the hardest time of my life. And my health coach Chantel reached out to me and she said, what do you want? And I said, I don't know. I'm trying to lose weight. I'm trying to exercise, but I don't have a baby. Like the shame, the shame that I held. I just, I felt like a failure as a mom. I just, there was so much mental baggage, right? And I just told her, I said, I need, I need to change. I need to get out of this place. And I want to be unstoppable. I want to be strong again. And so I wanted more. I wanted to be on fire. I wanted to just be awesome. <laughs> so I, I will admit I buffered with Netflix to escape my reality. And at times it got me through because I couldn't sit in my sadness anymore and my grief. I buffer with baking uh, online shopping. And I still, to this day, catch myself being like, well, I have a lot of laundry to do. I should probably go do all that. And I don't, I don't do the things that I really could accomplish during a day, but, um, I am back to health coaching. I am healing and it's, uh, I'm in the best place of my life right now. Amber, like physically at 35, I'm in great shape now. And mentally my resiliency is like bring it on. And so what we're going to do today with you is difficult. Uh, and this is something that my health coach has brought to me because um, there's a lot of triggers out there for grief right now. And so I am willing right now with you and every, all my 4,000 closest friends <laughs> to show them how we process grief or any emotion. But for me, it's grief. Grief is at the top of my list. So I'm I'm ready um, when you are to do this. Hey, Katie. Thank you for your bravery and your story. And I don't know if you could see the comments that were going by in the chat, but so much love and support for you. So, okay, we're going to give you guys a gift. And this is in element 23 as well. We're going to go through five steps of processing your emotions. The first step is to name it. So Katie, if you were to name the emotion, the thing inside of you, how would you name it? It is grief. <laughs> it yeah. hurts. Definitely grief. There's anger there too, but grief is the big one. Okay. Okay, so your grief, I want step two, I want you to locate it. Where do you feel it in your body? Where is it manifesting for you the most? It's on my chest right here. My chest, like it goes through my whole body, but it starts with so much in my chest. Okay, good. And certain emotions tend to reside in centralized locations, but it is different for everyone. So you're feeling that grief in your chest. Sometimes it even helps to just touch it. I saw you touch it. I saw you touch that area. Okay, I want you to describe it. Step three. It is like an intense 
pressure that just shoves me down. Like it's so heavy and it's just this weight that I can't get off. And it's just like, like a punch to my chest. I can't get out from under it. Okay, so good. Weight, it's like a punch in your chest, hard to get out from under it. Such good describing words. Okay, the next step, I want you to just breathe with it. I want you to feel where it is. Now you're not trying to get rid of it. You're just allowing it to be there. Engage and notice your body, especially where it's manifesting. Acknowledge it while you're breathing. Let those thoughts pass. You're not fighting it. You're not saying go away. You're allowing that to be exactly where it is. Exactly what you're feeling is completely acceptable to be there. And I want you to take a deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. You might have to take several of those. Yeah, I get really hot. Like the emotion, like when my brain kicks into that, that lizard brain, it just gets like, I start sweating immensely. Like I know when my brain is triggered, it's so hot. So like just the breath of being like, okay, I am so sad. Yes. And that's okay. We don't need to put stuff on top of it. We don't need to buffer it. We don't need to push it down, down, down. Just allowing it to be there. Allowing that energy in motion. E-motion. Energy in motion. Okay. Keep breathing. How is it feeling even after like a minute of breathing? It's lighter. I don't, I'm not sweating (laughs) as much. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we need to allow it and let it be there and accept it for it to actually move through us. Have you found that? Yeah. Because I can't push it away. Like my grief is like, like a wind, like I can't physically grab it, you know, it just all of a sudden suffocates me. So to like, just be like, okay, so I am having a hard time breathing. Let's just like, obviously I need oxygen right now. (laughs) Yes. That last step, learn from it. What wants to be let go of or mourned for sadness, for anger? What wants to be stopped, changed or ended or fear? What wants to be known? So many times we just think that we just need to cover it up, but sometimes we need to learn from the emotion that's there. So for you, Katie, what wants to be let go of or mourned? Uh, I have learned that my grief has taught me I don't have to be 100% healed. Like it's not this checklist or this, it's linear and there are days that are going to be hard. And my grief has taught me that I have people around me to help me. And the fear is when last week I had to take a pregnancy test because I was late and I couldn't look at it because I'm like, if I'm pregnant again, am I going to miscarry? If I'm pregnant again, can I even have a baby? Like there's so many things that I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. I am terrified of a stick right now. And I had to work through that. And I talked to you about that. And it's like, okay, my grief has taught me that I loved my son and I love him still. And it's okay to carry that and to like acknowledge it. It's okay to hurt. It's okay to heal. And it's okay. I love that. Katie, oh my gosh, thank you so much for your share. I know that we all just want to wrap you in a giant hug. And I want everybody to realize this isn't so that Katie stops grieving. This isn't to make it go away because that's a process. But each day, I do this on a daily basis, is processing the emotions that are there and that have wisdom for us. And I want to close with this this quote. This is from Viktor Frankl. And he said, between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. And there is so much growth and freedom found in processing our emotions instead of covering them up. 
instead of buffering them and pushing them down deep. And there is so much power in that. So again, thank you so much, Katie. Okay, I have a question for everyone on the line. What action are you going to take as a result of this element? I want you to connect with your coach. Share with him or her what action that you're going to take, what this means to you, how you can process. And just as our wrap up, how about a quick poll? How did you enjoy this community time? How did it touch you? Did it help you? Did you find it excellent, very good, good, below average, poor, <laughs> whatever it was? We want to hear your feedback. All feedback is good feedback for us to get better, to continue bringing you things that are going to help you move forward in your life and in your health. And we are just so blessed to be able to, to share this time with you. Just a reminder, if you want a reminder, this, a reminder for the reminder, to hop on these every week, text Optivia30 to 99000. You can also find playbacks if you're like, what are those five steps? Oh my goodness, I need to review. <laughs> Go to our YouTube channel and subscribe or on our podcast and subscribe. Habits of Health Community Time. And share this. Share this with your friends, with your family, with your clients, with your coaches. Because we just want to give more value. We hope you'll join us next week. For our Health and Hope Night, Deborah and Daniel Giles are going to be sharing and we are going to be live streaming it to Facebook as well. And we hope that you will join us. So thank you so much. At Optivia, our mission is to offer the world lifelong transformation, one healthy habit at a time. The prior audio contained the personal testimonials of independent coaches and clients within the Optivia community. Their results are based on the unique experiences of their journey. We cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. We hope those stories inspire you to continue your journey with or to consider joining Optivia. But please note that they have not been verified and your individual journey to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you speak with a healthcare provider in the U.S. or a doctor in Singapore and Hong Kong prior to beginning your journey with Optivia. Additionally, this audio may have contained income or earning representations of some independent Optivia coaches. We cannot guarantee financial success. Success with Optivia is derived from successful sales efforts, which require hard work, diligence, skill, persistence, competence, and leadership. Optivia acknowledges that this audio may be accessible to Optivia coaches in the U.S., Hong Kong, and Singapore. For independent Optivia coaches operating in the U.S., please see the Optivia Income Disclosure Statement for statistics on actual earnings of U.S. coaches under the U.S. Compensation Plan. Please note that the Income Disclosure Statement only applies to independent Optivia coaches operating in the U.S. under the U.S. Compensation Plan and does not in any way constitute any representations as to actual or potential approval of benefits for Hong Kong or Singapore coaches under the International Compensation Plan. Yours in health, the Octavia team.